Where did you grow up at? In Pittsburgh and Garfield. Throughout the whole Garfield, but I'm from Cornwall. I played for the Gators. Known in the neighborhood. Good brother. Good brother, I would say. Definitely. What was your environment like growing up in Garfield? Like it was, I would say it was pretty cool, but basically it was still poverty. You know, everybody ain't got the most there. Everybody ain't got the least. But make it shake, make it shake. Right, still yeah. loving environment, yeah. right? Yeah, heck yeah. Love through the hood, everywhere. My pops wasn't always around, but I had big influences. Your uncle was an influence. Oh, yeah. From the ghetto, you would say. <laughs> definitely, <the> definitely. <laughs> what was your most memorable moment growing up? I graduated in National Honor Society. Like, I had hope then. Like, where I, I could be anything I wanted to be. Like, that was probably my biggest memory. And going to prom. Really? Going to prom, yeah. So talk yeah. about how you got into that program. Actually, I uh, got in scholars classes, like fifth grade. Been in mm. scholars my whole life. A's and B's, honor roll student. And I just somehow got chosen to be a part of that program. Really? Taking college courses in 11th grade. Really? Yeah, yeah. I got college credits now, you know. So I, that's one of the things in life. I don't regret it. It ain't never too late. But the events that occurred in my life straight me from that path. Really? Yeah. So as a child, when you realized that you were gifted, what did you want to be growing up? I wanted to be an engineer. Really? Or an architect, yeah. I like to build houses. I love math. I love math. I heard. Love, love <laughs> math. Uh, that's what I wanted to be. I definitely did. And some choices I made right after high school, I don't regret it, like I said, but I should have took initiative, like stuck with my goal instead of taking time off. And events occurred that led me to stray from that path, literally. Yeah. Do you regret any of that? You said you do. No, I don't yeah. regret it. I think what if sometimes, though. Mm, like, what, what if? if what if I would have had time to stop and think, catch up with my thoughts? I think what if. I definitely do, but I don't regret nothing because it made it me who I am today. Like, right. keep me pushing. I know I could get through anything, for real. Right. Do you think if your environment was different that maybe the, your circumstances would have been different? Yeah, probably. Probably. Like, that's what I said. Like, if I would have just... Straight from high school, went straight to college. And who knows where I would be, but like I said, I still don't regret it because I'm grateful to still be here, grateful for my upcoming, right. grateful for my trials and tribulations, things that occurred to give me strength. I'm definitely grateful, but I definitely had out with it all the time. All the time. All the time. I respect that, Scoop. I do. So what was your least memorable moment growing up? Like my least favorite uh, is the passing of my sister. Your sister, Shay, right? Yeah, my sister, Shay. Like, that was my... How old were you when Shay passed uh, away? Man, I was a fresh, a fresh 18. 18? 18, 19, fresh. Like, yeah, that's the most heartbreaking day in my life. Literally the most heartbreaking day in my life. What were you feeling when you heard your sister passed away? be honest, I didn't even hear she passed away. Like, I came back and found her. Mm, so, you're, away. so you're saying you found her? Yeah, like, I found her. And by the grace of God, or whoever's out there, something was in me strong enough to get her down from hanging, lay her down, give her CPR, enough strength to yell for my mom to come down, but don't come down. I called an ambulance, like, but I was like, man. And she made it to the hospital. Like I said, she was on a ventilator for for like 10 days. Oh, okay. And some, I came one day and she wasn't there no more, mm. which I don't know what decisions was made but, yeah. for whoever made that decision. Still don't agree with that to this day, but like, that was the most heartbreaking thing, heartbreaking thing in my life. Like, I changed my life, for real, literally. How did you deal with that as a an 18-year-old finding your sister? You know, how did that how did that make you feel? Like Man. what were you feeling? How could it possibly be a god be a god for this to happen to me like and at the same time I didn't know what to feel. Like I was so angry like so I was so so angry. 
Like, so angry. <laughs> like, I really felt like, what the fuck? I could basically say that. Like, I felt like, what the fuck? Like, there's no possible way this shit could happen. And I was lost. I was lost. Like, you can't, can't nobody tell me, oh, I've, I can relate or I understand. You can never. It's going to get better. Yeah, that is never going to get better. Never. Never, ever, ever. It still ain't no better to this day. <sighs> ever. It's never going to get better. So I say that was probably the worst, worst time of my life. It changed my whole life. How did you deal with that trauma? You said Dude. you were angry. You questioned your your religion, your uh, faith. How man, did you deal I with that? I was hurt. So I was hurting people. Mm. Literally, like I had a lot of good people in my life. Like they're still around, you know what I mean? But I was lost. I was hurting people. I was hurting myself. I didn't care who I hurt. I didn't mm. care what happened the next moment. Like, like and I just realized that recently. Like my life's mess not where I'm at now, not because of decision, but because at that time I started doing a whole bunch of just crazy decisions. Mm. And it led up to a lot of extra events and me pushing a lot of love away, me pushing myself away, me drinking, smoking, just running wild, mm. like like just just lost, literally, like lost, lost. So you're dealing with this trauma. Do you also have your mom and your other sister? Yeah. So you all so, you guys are dealing yeah, with this trauma literally. separately. Yeah. So and how? also I'm trying to be there for them, but mm. I don't know how to be there for them. Because you don't need to be there for yourself. Literally. Like, it's I'm, a new experience. I'm a kid. Like, I won't say I'm a kid. Like, I'm mature. I'm smart enough. But I'm a kid in my mind. Right. Like, I'm still got thoughts in my mind. Like, I still want to go outside, play basketball, go to party. I still want to be, like, a kid. Like, I'm still fresh out of high school. So, I, I didn't know how to be there for them or be strong for them. Like, you know, people say I'm strong, but I don't see that. Mm. I don't see the strength in me. Right, right. We Definitely often don't, don't see the strength, but other people can yeah, see it, right? Yeah. I was living for a long time, just going through the motions. Just I exist, like, you know what I mean? As long as somebody else is smiling, I'm cool with that. But inside, I'm, like, dead. Like, I'm dying. Like, literally, my soul hurt. Like, literally. I can relate to that, Scoop. Literally. I can relate to that. You feel uh, dead yeah. inside. Everybody, yeah. you try to smile, make sure everybody yeah, happy. But you, you know, getting that quiet time by yourself, you you crying for no reason. You don't know why. Like, damn, I need a hug. Literally, so. Huh? So when I say I can relate to that, too, mm -hmm. how does that make you feel when other people can't even tell that, Obviously, you're going through something. Yeah. You're there for other people. But like you said, I need a yeah. hug, too. How did that make you feel? Once like, okay, like, where's my yeah. hug? Mm. Angry. That's, that's when I said. Pushing people away. Hurt. Real hurt. Like, mm -hmm. if if you love me, you should see that I'm hurting. Like, you should see through the fake smile, the, mm -hmm. the fake conversations, the I give you a fake laugh, and as soon as I turn away, I'm about to cry. Like, you should see that. Right. Literally. So, it's like I... I it's not animosity, but I would say it's like a hurt. Yeah, hurt, super hurt. And yeah. I, and at point in time, I had like hatred in my heart. Like, you know, I hate the world. I hate everybody. There's no way you could make me feel better. Literally. That's so, so honest. That's so honest. Have you ever thought about like talking to those people and like letting them know how you felt at that time, or even when you said you were pushing people away, even yeah. like thanking them, like thank you for being there when I was pushing you away and you still stayed. Uh, at that moment in my life, no, I felt like you should just feel like somebody had an obligation to make sure I feel better. Mm. Just knowing my, just knowing what I've been through, just knowing my everyday struggle, just. I mean, you know I'm hurt. You see me dying inside. Like, you see me harming myself. You see me just running wild. You should take time. Like, ask me. And at the same time, I was blinded by my pain. So people might have been reaching out, but I still didn't see it because I'm so angry and hurt. So I, I, I don't know. Like, I, and I just didn't care. Like, I didn't have sympathy for nobody. Mm. And I might have, people might have been scared. Like, I don't know. Nobody mm -hmm. never shared with me about how they felt because at the same time, I didn't want to hear it. Right. So I definitely, I, I, that's one thing I do regret in life, though. Like, I pushed, for me being hurt, I pushed a lot of love out of my life, a lot of good people. 
Yeah, that's a hurtful thing about trauma going through. Yeah. You realize who's there for you and who's mm -hmm. not. Have you ever thought about therapy, even like when you were going through your the, the, the death of your sister, you know, the loss of your sister? Did you ever, mm -hmm. ever think about therapy, or no. was it offered from your parents? Yeah, it was offered from a lot of people. But I, I never, I don't know, I just had it bottled up so much. Like, I, I didn't know how to express it. Like, mm -hmm. And I felt like I can't, I didn't just want to talk to a random person. Like, after this session and I leave, what are you? You ain't gonna be there for when I break down again. Like when I go through the skin, you're not sure. I gotta call you and stuff. So I, I didn't feel like at the moment I didn't feel like the, that was a way for me to communicate my feelings. I would say. You still feel that way? You no. Know, like that's why I'm very appreciative of you asking me to come on. Here. Thank you, Sam. It gave me a whole lot of courage to even just talk about this. I didn't know how much I was hurt till you asked me this. Oh. So I. Uh, I guess I don't feel that way no more, you know? Mm, I I just, I'm that. appreciative of things more. And I feel like maybe somebody could, you know, relate to my story or want to hear my story or curious about what I go through. So, like I said, I'm very appreciative of you asking. Oh, thank you, Scoop. Appreciative of you coming on here and telling your story because it takes yeah. a lot of courage. Yeah. yeah. And then I think in the black community, it's it's looked upon like, you're showing your vulnerability, yeah, and yeah. a lot of men don't want to yeah, do that. And that's what, and that's what, I've, that's what, like I, like I was so, but also I didn't want to break down. I still got to keep pushing, still mm -hmm. show that I'm strong. But that's what I'm learning now. That's a part of life, like expressing yourself. That gets a lot off your back, right. a lot off of you. I think you should think about therapy. Just, I yeah. mean, you can't knock something until yeah, you try yeah, it. Right. But you know what I look at it as like, right. you express your feelings to friends and family. Sometimes mm -hmm. they run in. You yeah. know, go tell your business. Yeah, With a therapist, they have the obligation where that stays yeah. between y'all. That's right. Real about that. I'm going I'm to I'm give it a try. You I'm should. Gonna, yeah, Just try. try. You know, um, I'm actually trying therapy. Yeah. I'm going through it now. I can't really say I like you or I don't because yeah. I'm going to be honest. I don't know yet. Yeah, that's real. But I do like the fact that I'm sharing those moments with someone else that I know that yeah. It's not going to go anywhere yeah. else because yeah. I'm very private. Like, I don't want anybody to know no, my no. business. So I think that that's one thing that I appreciate yeah. about it. Yeah. I'm going to so definitely try it. Just try it and let me know. I be having a lot of shit to say, but I don't know how to say it, who to say it to. Right. And I think it's all about yeah. them showing you how to figure out, like, who you are. Yeah. Because you, you could be talking and they could say something. And you could be like, oh, wait, that's why I did yeah, that. So you're kind of figuring out yourself. Like, yeah, you know. Yeah, you're right about that. So don't knock it until you try. But, I mean, I get it. What's the most memorable thing that you remember about Shay? Tell me it's about everything. Shay. Everything about her. How she was my mom, even though she's my younger sister. But she kept me, like, stable on stable ground, a great foundation. She was my mom when my mom wasn't there, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, even though I'm older, I'm all about me trying to be grown right now. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, make sure you take the trash out. Make sure you do your homework. Make sure you pick a stuff from school. You know what I mean? We got to get up, get dressed. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So she was like like my rock, for real. We did everything together, for real. Mm -hmm. Literally. Literally. Like, and her smile. Her smile. How she, her conversation. Just how she just told me how I much mean, she loved me. Mm -hmm. You know, we fought all the time, but. She loved. I loved her so much. She loved me like she, I couldn't do no wrong in her eyes to me, at least. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I really miss about her. There's some times when I'm angry and she tell me it's gonna be all right. Some sibling moments where we talk about shit in the family who's getting on her nerves. Just, just mm -hmm. it was just her. Literally, just her. Everything about her. Everything about her. Everything. Mm -hmm. I love that. What do you do to keep her memory alive? What do you do? Uh, I think it, well, I got her, like, two her name tattooed on me twice. Okay. But, I, you know, I think about her every day. I ain't say I to keep it. It's, she's always alive to me. When on her birthday, I always have a blast. Make sure I have a blast. I might puff a black of mouth two times throughout, I mean, the week just in her memory. Might drink a Heineken and I don't even drink beer. It's little stuff she used to do and like, you know what I mean? Just here and there to keep her in my spirit. But as far as like with everybody, like if you know me, I'm celebrating every September 12th. You know I'm celebrating. I'm waking up celebrating. 
the whole day. So I, that's what I do. Like just, just, just little things throughout my days, you know, just to keep her alive in my spirit. I love that. Mm-hmm. I want to um, be careful what I say because I know it's a touchy mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. Um, does this make you uh, more aware of like suicide awareness? Prevention and things like that. Yeah, I have a, a like I, I still can't like watch a movie and see somebody hanging. A whole lot of respect for somebody who could commit suicide. Not just because of my sister, just knowing like how much courage that takes. Mm. That takes a lot of courage for you to be like I can't deal with it no more, and get it, leave this earth. Like so, I have a a whole like a whole lot of respect for somebody that could do that. And I just be careful of, I at least try to be careful of what I say to somebody. Mm. Or like words definitely affect somebody a lot. So I, I'm try to be aware of it, but I respect it. I don't condone it. I don't like it at all. But I, you never know what somebody's going through. Like one thing I learned from you never know what somebody's going through. Ever. Right. I'm real big on that too. I always tell them to teach my daughter, be kind. You yeah, never know what somebody's know. going through. The conversation goes a long way. It goes a long kind words, you know. Yes. It could change somebody's true, right. You might be whoever's on your same energy, your spirit animal, anything. You never Swear. know. <laughs> Facts. You never know. Facts. Um, I feel like I don't know, in a black community, especially at that age, at that time, mm-hmm. suicide awareness was not like really talked about. Yeah. Yeah. So being as though it was not talked about, it was mm-hmm. like, you know, it wasn't a, a, I don't want to say a big thing, but you didn't see that yeah. happening. Last thing I ever on earth would have thought that happened. Like for me to leave for a couple minutes and come back, and she's hanged. That's the last thing I ever thought on earth. Like, I didn't even think she was going through something that would make her push her to do that. Right. So that, nah. I just I'm just big on that now. Like I, I know I'm I know I'm a, I know I'm an asshole. Like I know I cut a fool, I joke all day, but at the for the most part I'm a very good dude, kind dude. Like I, mean, I think so. Like I'm cool motherfucker, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> you've say. always been cool with me, yes, you know, no. looked out, so yeah, hell yeah. <clears throat> let's switch gears here. Mm-hmm. In two thousand seven your life changed tremendously. Yeah. Can you talk about what happened? Uh, well, I want to say the wrong place at the wrong time, but the wrong place at the wrong time. But what happened was, like I said, I'm running around wild in the streets and uh, at somebody's little, little trap or whatever you want to call it, trying to get myself together, get my situation together and Somebody was in there robbing. I go in there. The guy got the gun pointed out my face. I grabbed him. We're tussling for the gun. The, the clip fall out. Me, I'm still tussling. And another dude jumped from behind the couch and shot me in the back. And, like, instantly, like, 10 seconds after I got shot, I knew I was paralyzed. Like, mm. yeah, that's, 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 you, felt, you could just yeah, felt bad. different. Man, like, I... You ever, like, your arm go to sleep or something, that tingle? I just felt that, and I just couldn't keep myself standing up. And I, f- like, like fell, like, as if I was about to do a push-up. And I just kept trying to get up, but mm. couldn't get up. I just knew then, like, yeah, I'm paralyzed. Like, I got a bullet in my back, in my spine. So what happened after that? After, did the guys leave after that? Yeah, they left. They left. I mean... Stole all the stuff, whatever, took my money. Yeah, they definitely left. Took a girl with them. They was on some, like, high shit, I guess. Like, some super robbery stuff. But took the girl, they left, and I was on the floor for, say, like, an hour and a half, waiting for the ambulance to come. And they come, like, try to secure the scene. And I'm, like, ask me questions. I'm, like, I don't care about nothing. Where's the help? Like, so it took, I probably got to the hospital two hours later. Two hours? Yeah, probably like two hours later. Were you waiting for that? Like, what took yeah, like them? like, I'm in a house on the floor, but something in the universe, God, if that's what you want to say, I wasn't, like, bleeding a lot. Like, mm-hmm. I was just paralyzed. But it's 
They were just in trying to secure the building, make sure there ain't no more shooters, do not whatever the cops do. And then the ambulance finally came and uh made it to the hospital, ICU. Yeah, but I'm now that where I'm at now, I'm like got a little piece with it. So I I gotta look back and laugh a little bit like but like I said, I don't regret nothing. Just the decision that I made at that moment, that's what I felt in my heart to do. At that time, like, do you? Yeah, like I felt like you're not just taking that from me. You know, at that moment, I felt like that. And I never regret people. I don't want like to be like, oh, you could have did this, you could have did that. But like I said, I was still angry at the world. Like, So I don't know. I mean, I don't regret my decision. I definitely don't because... I live by whatever I say, I'm going to stand on it. I got morals, values, and everything. And I worked hard to get that money. You ain't just going to take my money, you know? So. Right. You probably felt like, you know, it's either fight, yeah, flee. You like, yeah, I mean, I don't, this is all I know is literally. to fight my way out of here. Literally. Was there anybody in there, like, not to say their name, was there anybody yeah. there to, like, to call the ambulance yeah, or anything yeah. like that? That was, that was a blessing. Yeah. There was a few people in there, actually. I'd say about, like, eight people. So me knowing you, the person that you are, uh-huh. and I heard you say you always make sure everybody else is cool. Do you think that that motion, that action, was because you were trying to protect everybody else? Uh, I would say, or I would say, it was like I wouldn't say trying. I was trying to protect me first. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't even say everybody else. I'm just on some like, you serious? I wouldn't even say it was for everybody else. And not nah, yeah. I wouldn't say that. I couldn't even say that. Like, just trying to think in my head, like, what it would have been, like, a super, no, it wasn't that. It was just trying to protect me. Like, I'm not going to get shot. And I still got shot. So, I don't know. It, it might have been a bad decision in some people's eyes, but I don't regret nothing about it. So, in your eyes, you're like, I stand on yeah, like that. Yeah, stand actually. on what I did. Like, like I, I stand can't. on what I believe, in, you know. Because I'm not out here robbing and conniving people. So, I'm not just going to take what I worked hard for. Right, because you, you're saying, like, you walked into this. Yeah, yeah, basically. So what emotions were you feeling? Because I know you said at that moment you knew mm. you were paralyzed. Yeah. So you're, like, what are you feeling at this moment? I just want to help. Mm. Like, I just want to help, like, just, I knew, like, I, I felt it in my heart, I knew. But I just want to help for that possibility, like, damn, am I going to walk again? Like, I still had hope that I was going to walk again, but I knew, like, and the bullet's still in my back. Still. Yeah, so, I mean, I I, can, I don't know what I was feeling. I just wanted help, literally. I just wanted help. So when they doctors told you, you know, what you were already thinking, mm-hmm. and that just confirmed it and solidified everything, how did that change your life? I can't even, like, put it in where it changed my life. Like, not even from the physically, Physical. like, mm-hmm. being in a wheelchair it changed my life for opportunities it took away from me. Like, I would say that it changed. It it, it, it put a, a sense in my mentality, like, I have less opportunity. I ain't going to live the way I used to live. Like, I mean, because to this day, I still feel like I'm still here, you know. I still have a blast, but at that moment, I said, like, Given I was only twenty one, you know I'm only twenty one at this time, so it, it 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 took away a lot of a lot of everything. It took away a lot of drive. It took away a lot of confidence. Mm. It took away a lot of uh, of my my leadership qualities. It took it took a lot away from me. It took. It let people be able to just speak to me and and act the way they wanted to act me and do certain things to me that they wouldn't normally like, do. Yeah, it took it took a lot away from me, a whole lot. Like, like I I wouldn't say it changed my life. It did. Mm-hmm. Well, I couldn't even say it, but it did. But it took a lot, a, a lot of just opportunity for me, a lot. I uh, yeah, I I understand how you would feel that way. I know earlier you mentioned you were angry mm-hmm. when your sister Shay passed, and then you got you know paralyzed. Were you more angry when you were paralyzed, or were you where were you at that that time mentally? I said like I felt like like 
because I say they, this stuff happened within like ninety days. I would say mm. my sister passing a couple years later, turned twenty one. Then ninety days later, I'm in a wheelchair. So I felt like God, what the what the hell? Like God, what the hell? Like I ain't take no more. Like I can't mm-hmm. take no more. Like and I was super angry. Like there's no way there could be a God. How could he put one person through all of this? Mm-hmm. Literally, not saying like. My situation is the worst, but Understood. me being that young, I'm like, God, there's no way you could put me through this much stuff back to back. And I'm, I don't even know where I'm headed in life, you know? So I definitely was angry, and I definitely felt like, F God, there, there is no God. Like I felt like that for a long time. I respect your honesty, Scoot. Mm-hmm. I really, really do. Thank Where are you at with your religion and faith now? Do you still feel that way, or do you st- are you working say, on it? I, I would say I I don't believe in society's God. You know the white person they put out there, but I, I would say I'm more spiritual because I know one thing for sure: something's working, or I wouldn't be here. Right. Something's working for me to keep pushing. Something's working for me to have nephews that look at me like a superhero and they never mm-hmm. seen me walk. So. So I know something's working, but I don't believe it's the God that they portray. Mm. No. Love that. Yes. Love mm-hmm. that. How important is support during your transition? Like when you went from, you know, being paralyzed, how important was support? Like if I think I would have had time to think, I would have appreciated the support I had. Like the people that was trying to push me. But I was, like I said, I was so angry, lost. Like, hopeless, you know, depressed at times. You know, like, literally, like, I didn't know which way I was going. So I should have recognized the support, but I, at, the, at that time, I just I just wanted a hug at that time. Somebody to tell me it's going to be all right. That's really where I was at. But I definitely had support. I had people w- wanting me to do better for myself, but. Like I said, I, could, I didn't even know where myself was, so I don't know. How was your mom doing all of this? Like this, is, I know it's a lot yeah. for you, definitely, but your mom, yeah, you know, mom, think, lost a child, her son's paralyzed. Yeah, like, that's a mom, lot. My mom was coping with it by working. Mm. Literally, like, thinking back on it now, I think she was coping with it by working and just Being going, busy. Through, going through the motions, too, I would say that. like. It wasn't like she slacked as a mom, but she constantly worked. Like, she, she never sat still. Like, she was always on the move, you know. Like, she was definitely around, but she was always on the move. Like, and now me looking at it, I felt like that was her way of coping. Just making sure the house was cool, making sure we provided for her. But she's always gone, literally. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can relate to that, too. And I might have to ask her that, too. Like, how do she feel? I know she's hurt. I know she's yeah, was, was, a lot. Still, she's probably still her every day. She you know she loved me. She loved to see me, but I know she want better, wanted better for her child, her kids rather. I know she's hurt, but I guess she's dealing with it in her way. Yeah, that's why she can. In her way, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. I just hear trauma after trauma mm-hmm. after trauma, and you know, like what I know you said you. You didn't do therapy. You're thinking about it, maybe. But what do you do to, like, when you're going through the motion, what makes you feel good? Like, what do you do mm-hmm. when you're having a bad day? I just sit and think and talk to myself, for real. I get my thoughts out loud. Might have little outbursts or sing R&B or something, but I don't really do too much. Like, if I get that hurt, I might call somebody and vent a little okay. bit, but not, like, to the extent of telling them what's all the way wrong with me. But Why I, not? I, I don't I don't know. I, I guess I just choose to keep it bottled up. And I feel like nobody can relate to what I'm going through. I feel like like I don't want to just you to hear me, then you want to try to give me your advice. How could you give me some advice about nothing you experienced? That's so true. If you never experienced that, how could you give me some advice about it? So sometimes, like, like I said, I, I thank you for even making me consider therapy. Because sometimes I just want somebody to hear me. Yeah. I said, I don't even want no under. I just want you to hear me. Just let me get this out without having an opinion about it. So, um, I got, I got, there's a lot I'm still working on. 
this is a start. I'm very appreciative of this, man. Oh, thank you, Scoop. Thank you. Yeah, um, I learned that in life, too, because I, I felt like I was, people always vent to me, and mm-hmm. I felt like I always have to have a solution yeah. for them. And then I had to realize, Courtney, everybody does yeah. not want a solution. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking listen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just listen. Like, so I've, I've, I've learned that in life mm-hmm. to just kind of, some people just want you to just listen. Yeah. yeah. That's really what I'd be at with it. Like, just hear me. Like, mm-hmm. even just if important. you ain't just look like you listen, just let me get it out. Like, because I, I keep stuff in so much. Mm-hmm. I'd be asking myself, like, how do I got the strength to keep going? So, I, I, that's all I be. just want somebody to hear me for real. Yeah, you need got to have somebody listen to you. You got to have that person. What do you feel like was the least helpful during, like, everything the trauma in your life uh, i know you mentioned um people feeling like people giving their opinions and things like yeah. that what else did you feel like wasn't helpful to you i would say uh somebody trying to force something on me mm, i, I don't like say, that either i would say like somebody forced me like you should be doing this or why you ain't doing this and you I don't even know why I ain't doing this. Like literally, <laughs> literally, like, like, literally, like, I, like, really, it's just, just somebody, like, and literally, somebody having control over my life, me, and me having to depend on somebody too mm. much, a whole lot. Yeah, but that's the least thing I like. Like my dependency on another person, and the control that a person has gained over me mm. from my situation. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Feel that. So let's get into something positive. We've been like real sad here. Mm-hmm. So today I got your your clothing line on. Yes. Um, Shithead. Is Shit that hit. the name of the, yeah, your clothing yep. line? Shit what hit. made you start your clothing uh, line? I started my clothing line because, no, I would say basically I'm a shithead. I wouldn't say like a derogatory, but I'm a okay. shithead. I like to have fun, live life, you know, call my friends. Hey, what's up, shit? You know, mm-hmm. And then I thought about it like it's deeper than that because it's it's more like a a term of endearment to mm-hmm. me and my gang, you know. Okay. And I and it, and it's basically like that's us. It's like something that came from inside of us that we say. So uh, that's what really made me start it. And I'm like, why not? People, I'm a good dude. People mess with me, and I, you know, put it together. I got a little taste in clothes. So. Okay. Felt like I wanted to do it. Yeah, I feel like I'm <laughs> loving this way. Yeah, Show off you. your other T-shirt that oh, you yeah, have. Got- How do how do you go about buying your purchasing your clothing, your t shirts? Uh, there we go. Uh, uh right now I'm just I'm only like a fresh two months in, so okay. I'm still trying to get vendors and you know, but to get in contact with me on Facebook. Okay, go ahead, put your uh, Donnie links Cornwall. D U N Y C O R N W A L L. You can just message me if you are inquiring about it. And uh, it stands for Seek Humility and Thought. Like, basically, look inside yourself. Quit looking for everyone else to give you answers. Be mm-hmm. humble and figure it out yourself. You know, be knowledgeable. Want to gain information instead of just taking information. That's mm-hmm. all. I love it. I love it. How much are the T-shirts? Uh, they're $20, $20 right now. Okay. We got the purple. Put it up. Yep. Yeah. We got That's cute. I one. like that. The alien on the back. With, with a stand for on the sleeve, oh, and I also got this design with the alien on the back. Okay. Oh. Okay, I like it. Yep, thank you. I really thank like you. this one. This is really cute. I like this. So we can hit you up on Facebook yep. to purchase them. Yep. Okay. How do you accept payment? Like through Cash App? Yeah, like how do you? Cash App. Got PayPal. Okay. Cash. Cash. Uh, I'll, whatever. You know, I'll deliver it to you. <laughs> Okay, I I'm feeling it. I love yeah. it, Scoot. Let's leave off with a positive um, mm-hmm. quote or advice for the for the uh, audience. No matter what occurs in life, I, now I'm realizing I'm a pushing testimony, walking, living testimony that no matter how bad it gets, you can always keep pushing, you can always keep striving, and uh, slow down. Be mindful of things you're going through. Like, take a moment out yourself to reflect on things before you just react. Because one one decision I made put me in a wheelchair, which I don't regret, but one split second could change your life. So 
Just be mindful, basically. And the kind word goes a long way. That's all I can say. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so yep. much for coming uh, on The Naked you. Truth with Courtney. Definitely appreciate you. I appreciate you, Scoot. Thank yep. you so much.